Hello, this is Brian Resney, President of Resney Wealth Management and Chief Investment Officer. We have a great show for you this morning. Of course, we're going to be taking your questions. You can always send your questions to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. And please visit our website. If you're having any concerns about your portfolio, if you're having doubts about the advice you're receiving, if somebody's trying to sell you the annuity of the month or a non-traded read or expensive mutual funds, or you're realizing your portfolio is just not performing, meaning the market's going up, but you're not going up with it, Maybe that's a reason for concern, and maybe it's a reason for a second opinion. Visit ResneyWealth.com for more information about our firm, our investment programs, and better yet, sign up for a consultation at our firm. A second opinion often is the best remedy for the bad advice you're receiving from your Wall Street firm, your bank, or the annuity salesperson. You know, I want to talk today about general investing, the economy, and what you should be doing with your money. And as always, I'm going to tell you what you need to avoid so you have the best possible chance at retirement success and financial success for you and your family. You know, it's devastating for investors on underperforming their portfolio. And let me talk a little bit about this. The real reason that investors underperform is often bad advice or emotional decision making, but I'm gonna go through some of the areas that I often find hurt you, the investor. And by the way, underperformance or bad performance of your investing or investment portfolio has catastrophic consequences to your retirement. I often review maybe five or 10 different portfolios in a given month at my firm. People who are not clients who want to hire my firm to manage their money properly. What I often find is this, from the bad advice they're receiving from their Wall Street firm or being sold a variable annuity or maybe from the, the, the bank salesperson, this bad advice accumulated over a five or 10 or 15 year period of time may have cost that family maybe a doubling of their portfolio. Yes, I often see that. I recently had somebody come into our office, a couple, and I reviewed their portfolio and really from emotional decisions that that couple was making and some of the products, the crummy expensive products like annuities, this couple was sold by their Wall Street firm. I estimated that this couple probably lost close to a million dollars of net worth in the last 10 years alone meaning their million dollar portfolio should probably be worth two million if they had proper advice about what they should have been doing with their money. Ask yourself this, are you making decisions or are decisions being made for your portfolio that are really harming your net worth and your ultimate financial security? Emotional decision making when it comes to picking investments. Anytime the market drops, whether it's the bond market, the stock market, real estate, gold. Investors often will go from emotion or become emotional and basically make changes to their portfolio at exactly the wrong time. This will take away return from your net worth and ultimately sacrifice your portfolio returns and your financial security. How many of you maybe have made an emotional decision before be honest with yourself. Have you made a decision with your portfolio that you can look back and say, wow, I shouldn't have done that? Recently, I had a gentleman who was managing his own money at my firm. And he told me, Brian, over the last 10 years, I was coming in and out of the market. Often when the market went down, I would come out. Of course, the wrong time. He told me back in 2016, he decided to go to cash after the January pullback in 2016. The market dropped about, let's say, 10, 11%. He stayed in cash for the last almost year and a quarter. What did that cost him? I estimated 20%. This was a person with a $2 million portfolio. I said, by you doing what you did without running a strategy, cost you and your family $400,000 in potential return. That's a lot of money. How are emotional decision, decisions affecting your portfolio and how much is, again, is that costing your retirement security? A lack of a long-term discipline approach or strategy and following that strategy. Again, at my firm, 
I've been managing money for almost 30 years. My team of seasoned professionals help our clients every single day achieve true financial security. Why and how? Simple. We follow a detailed investment strategy. We do not let emotions uh, uh, ruin the portfolio or decide the changes of that portfolio. We use a disciplined strategy. I will tell you, if you are working with a Wall Street firm, a bank, or an annuity salesperson, there is a high likelihood you're working under what's called suitability. You have no strategy, nor does your advisor. That puts you at harm's way, and it hurts your returns, and it hurts your retirement security. Chasing what's hot, not what's right. Remember 2000 technology boom and bust? The landscape was littered with investors who lost 50, 60% or more of their money because investors started plowing money into technology stocks even though they were grossly overvalued. People bought what was hot, not what was right. In 2006, remember the real estate boom and bust? I had countless people call my office in 2008 and 9 and ask to hire my firm to manage their money. These people were devastated because they decided to sell assets that were of quality and cheap to go chase speculation real estate, hence losing a lot of money. You, the investor, have to realize you have to follow a strategy, and so does your advisor, and if you're working under suitability, there's no strategy at all. You're in harm's way. Overloading the boat. This is another hot spot that hurts you, the investor. You own an investment. It's done pretty good. What do you do? You don't reallocate or rebalance your portfolio to your strategy weighting. You basically say, the other investment I owned in my portfolio didn't do as well as this investment. So you sell the underperformed investment and you put more in an overpriced investment, hoping you're going to make a bunch of more money. But guess what happens? That next year, that investment that was hot loses steam and drops 15%. You chased what was hot and you ultimately lose. You have to follow a strategy, and so does your advisor. Your advisor's emotional uh, or emotional decision-making and not following a strategy. You've got that right, your advisor. I remember uh, last year, a, a couple hired my firm. They were working with a big Wall Street firm, and they had doubts for many years. This person put them in and out of the market, at exactly the wrong time. They finally realized that this person was no more than a salesman after listening to my radio and TV shows for a couple years. They put two and two together. They did a little bit of research. They contacted my firm. We educated them. Now they're in a better position in our opinion. This couple realized that the decisions their broker was making were emotional decisions, even though they realized they should have been fully invested because we had no recession coming. The broker was emotional. The broker sold their stuff in and out of the market, whether that was for commission or just plain um, stupidity. It cost this client couple hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is that happening in your relationship currently and is it going to cost your relationship a lot more down the road? You must be disciplined or you will fail. One thing that I will stress to every investor that watches my TV shows or listens to my live radio shows on Sunday morning, if you are not disciplined, if you do not follow an investment strategy, if you fall prey to a sales pitch from a salesman of annuities or a Wall Street firm or bank, you ultimately will fail. You have to be disciplined, you have to follow a strategy, and you have to do what's right for your money. Too often, again, too many investors don't make the change. I will tell you this, at the end of the day, it's your decision making on who you hire or who you trust with your money that will make the difference from maybe poverty and retirement or maybe success. If you're getting bad advice, if you're having any doubts, what hurts you, the investor, is putting it off or procrastination. If you're having any doubts currently in your portfolio, if you're not happy with the advice you're getting, I always recommend to every listener, call my firm, schedule a consultation. Let's review what you're doing. It doesn't hurt to get a second opinion because at the end of the day, 
It's your decision to move forward to find the quality help that's going to secure your family. And remember, put your interest first ahead of your advisor. Conflicts and bad advice should never be part of your portfolio, ever. Get the right advice, call Resney Wealth at 800-618-8577 or visit our website. Sign up for a consultation, you will be glad you did. Judy from Estero, Florida. We have most of our money invested in real estate. We are selling off now. Can you suggest where we should put some cash when we sell the properties? We are in our 70s. Judy, the first thing that I would say to you is this. Investing isn't as easy as, hey, Brian, I have some cash. Where would you put it? That's what Wall Street does to you. They just sell you an investment. We are an actual money management firm. What I would first say is, what's the goals and objectives? What's the risk profile of you and your husband? Do you need income? Do you need growth or a combination of the two? Once you kind of figure out those decisions, then we can build a portfolio and then properly manage it. So you can grow your retirement income, grow your portfolio for future inflationary needs, and really help you secure your retirement by properly manage your investments. Now, I can give you a couple ideas today, but that's not gonna help you. you it sounds like you're going from real estate to cash, what do you do with the money? This is a long-term uh, scenario that has to play out correctly. You're in your 70s. You may live another 20 years easily in retirement. If you do the right things now, you have great chance of success. If you are sold bad investments and you have conflicts from Wall Street, that may be the devastation in your 70s that you don't want. Call my firm, schedule a consultation, You'll be happy that you did. We can talk more detail and do a better plan of attack that's more customized for you and your husband. Michael from Florida. I have listened, to your, listened and loved your radio shows for seven years. What ETS would you recommend for a 26-year-old son that has 80,000 to invest? Uh, Michael, great question. Uh, simple. Again, I, like my last caller, I would really suggest your son give our office a call. Let's talk a little more detail. But because your son is young and he should ultimately invest this money long term for growth, areas that we currently like in the overall economy, we like the emerging markets, we like the small and, and large cap in the U.S., I would be looking for more of a total return approach and I would always utilize what's called an exchange traded fund or ETF. The reason you want to do that, ETFs are low cost and you can be in almost any asset category with an exchange traded fund. It's a great tool to build a portfolio with. You've got built in diversification and you have low cost. But because your son is, is young, it's important that he starts off on the right foot with this money. He needs professional help. Go to my website. I'd like you to do a little education for your son, and your son should do the same. Go to my website, resdewealth.com. At the bottom of the homepage, you will see a free report for an instant download. It's, it's called Suitability versus Fiduciary. It's the biggest risk an investor has at any age. And this is the biggest mistake investors often make is who they hire. Download that uh, report. It has a nice questionnaire. It'll educate your son about the different kinds of advice he can receive and really help them help him point in the right direction on what he should be doing with his money, not only today, but over the next 50, 60, 70 years. Your son's going to be around a long time. Let's make sure his money has the best chance of success it can. Never hire a Wall Street firm. Never hire a bank. Never be sold an annuity. Only hire a fee-only fiduciary money management firm like Resney Wealth Management. I'm going to take a short break. I'll be right back with more questions after this. Hello, this is Brian Resney. If your goals are to increase your retirement income and retire without stress, go to my website and download our groundbreaking free report. This free report covers the investment and retirement pitfalls that are often overlooked even by the smartest investor. If you're concerned about outliving your money during retirement, 
or maybe you want to make sure you're not leaving money on the table, this free report is for you. Know the facts. Your retirement depends on it. Go to my website, ResneyWealth.com, and download your free report right now. And we're back. I hope you're enjoying today's program. Of course, visit our website, ResneyWealth.com. If you're having doubts about the advice you're receiving, if you want to be first over your advisor, meaning your interest always come first, then you have to visit our website. Call us for a consultation. The number's on the screen. Kathy from Miami, Florida. I am 64 and only have 50,000 in savings. I'm retired, not interested in long-term investing. I'm looking for 30, uh, to invest 35 to 40,000. I want something very safe. What would you suggest? Kathy, excellent question. If you are very cautious, you want safety, there's only one investment you should ever invest in for that, and that would be a bank CD. If you have 35 to 40,000 to invest and you want no risk at all, there is no investment in the world that really ultimately is safer than an FDIC insured CD at the local bank. You're not going to make a lot of money, you're not going to beat inflation, but your money will be safe, you'll have the warm and fuzzy, and you'll feel good at night. That's not the best uh, way to invest your money, in my opinion, but you have to invest based upon your risk profile. I would take half of that 35 to 40,000, put half in a one year CD, the other half in a two year CD. When the one year CD comes due, roll it into a two, C two year CD and keep going with the process. If interest rates go up a little bit over time, which I expect they will, you'll make a little more interest, but you'll sleep well at night and you'll have the safety you desire. Again, it's not the best way to invest, especially for somebody at your age, because you're gonna be around potentially 30 plus years. I would do something different, but you have to invest what your head tells you, which is if you're a little bit more emotional and you want more security, invest what makes you happy and you can sleep at night with. Dan from Naples, Florida. Are American retailers doomed? My concern is about some non-traded real estate trust I own and the risks they have. Dan, I'll tell you what, I've had a number of questions kind of in that same context uh, for maybe the last year or so. Let's talk about that. Your question is about American retailers. I think a lot of American retailers, yes, are doomed. Things are changing. You may have, might have heard of Amazon. People are starting to buy more uh, products, whether it's food, clothes, or anything else, online and have it delivered at the house. That's going to come at the detriment to a lot of retailers, classic retailers. I would not be a, a big investor, first off, in retail stocks in general, but the problem you have is, and this is one of the things I've talked about a lot. You own non-traded real estate trusts. If you are working with a Wall Street firm or bank, there's chances are you've been sold some of these crummy products. A non-traded REIT or real estate investment trust, as they're called, first off has huge expense ratio internally on a yearly basis, and a huge amount of your money is taken off the top when the product is sold to you, often close to 20%. So that's one of the problems. The other problem is if your REIT invests in a lot of these shopping malls or strip centers, and, all, and over the next three to five years, these retailers keep going out of business, and by the way, there's been a number of them this year that have declared bankruptcy, and there'll be more in the future, that mall becomes empty. That REIT you own that you depended on for cash or growth, starts to dry up and the value goes down because they can't rent out the real estate. This is a problem. Non-traded means you can't get out when you should get out. Non-traded means you're being taken to the investment woodshed by bad advice and sales from your Wall Street firm. This is the crux of the problem. Anytime you're sold these products that you can't get out where there's no liquidity, you don't want to do that. It's great for your broker, salesperson, not good for you. Did you know you could buy publicly traded real estate investment trust? Go in, come out whenever you choose. Non-traded, you could be locked up for the rest of your life with limited or no access to your money. And if that asset's going down because of the uh, way they invest the money or the type of tenants they have, your retirement 
is in jeopardy. I've repeated, I've talked about this repeatedly. How many times are investors like you that listen to my show going to allow your interest to come second to your Wall Street firm, the bank, or the person hawking and selling annuities? You should always come first. Never buy products that are not good for your wealth. Some of the hit list ones are the non-traded real estate trust. Annuities in general are crummy and expensive. And any of these products that often sold through Wall Street that they manufactured like structured products. There's more, but you as the investor need to have the right answers so you can make a good decision around you and your family's security. Barbara from Naples, Florida. Which ETF would be better for TIPS? By the way, folks, TIPS are Treasury Inflated Protected Securities. It's a type of government bond that pays interest and it gives you an extra interest based upon where the inflation level is going. Um, overall, this is what I would suggest, Barbara. Do a little bit of research. If you're going to buy TIPS, you want to look at ETFs only and you want to stay short-term duration because remember, there's some uh, ETFs that buy treasury inflated protected securities, but they have longer ma the maturity. TIPS are still bonds. They will go up and down in value. The longer the maturity, the more they can go down when interest rates go up. So what I will say is this. Do a little research. Look for ETFs or TIPS that basically own average three to five year maturity or less. You'll get the interest. You'll have a chance as inflation goes up to get a, a, an extra component to your uh, interest rate. That's the way to go. Short term duration. Rates will move up as the economy does better. The Fed has stated that. Manny from Cape Coral, Florida. How's Trump's tax proposal uh, could affect the muni bond market? Uh, another excellent question. Manny, this is how it works. Muni bonds, remember, are tax-free. If, if the overall tax brackets come down, muni bond values will probably come down. Because remember, the higher the tax bracket you are, the more beneficial it is to own municipal bonds. If, if tax brackets come down, under Trump's proposal, your munis become less valuable because you're not at a 39 bracket anymore. You might only be at a 25. So ultimately, I see munis coming down. I've already started to see some deterioration in certain munis already in valuation because of the proposal. I firmly believe this tax proposal over time will come through in some form or fashion. I expect that by the end of this year. But again, if you overload the boat in munis, if you don't understand how bonds work in general, that could be a detriment to your retirement and again, your portfolio. And bonds are a little complicated. There's times you wanna own them, there's times you might wanna sell some of them, and there's times you wanna change the kinds of bonds you own and or the duration. Josh from Florida. Hello, Brian, I'm thinking about investing in ETFs and was wondering if you had any good recommendations on emerging market ETFs or small cap ETFs. Any good all around ETF. I am looking for growth type ETF. I enjoy your weekly TV and radio shows. Thank you. Josh, uh, thanks for the nice comment. Generally speaking, if you're looking for emerging markets, I'll give you one, and we own this fair disclosure right now, and our positions can't change at any time in any ETFs we own. Uh, Vanguard's VWO is a great opportunity, good exposure, good diversification for the emerging market. Uh, I would look at maybe something like VB, uh, VBR, which is Vanguard's value on the value side of the small cap. Uh, we own that, again, fair disclosure. That would be a, a good opportunity. If you're looking for kind of an all-around ETF where you have small cap, mid cap, and large, I would look at uh, VTI, and that's Vanguard, uh, all basically all stock market in the U.S. Generally speaking, I like the overall U.S. marketplace the best, followed by the emerging market. We are er looking at, of course, the uh, uh, economies of Europe. Uh, we're not really invested there currently, or at least in any big way or form or fashion. I think there's going to be a lot of problems with Europe, and I think ultimately, as I've talked many times, I think the Eurozone and some of these countries will continue to leave like Brexit last year. And I think once some of these other better uh, countries that can grow, there may be an opportunity there as well. 
Uh, Maurice from Fort Myers, Florida. Thank you for your show. I understand uh, what you're saying about bonds and interest rates. I keep seeing articles that money has been pouring into high dividend bonds, ETFs otherwise known as junk bonds. How can this be explained? Maurice, great question. Uh, high yield bonds, junk bonds are really different than traditional bonds. High yield bonds act more like the stock market. In fact, if you look at high yield bonds in general, High yield bonds will have almost as much volatility and sometimes more than the stock market. I believe that investors are chasing yield. That's why money is flying into the high yield bond market. I would rather look at the, the stock market, dividends, and potential gain for total return. Uh, to me, you're taking as much risk or less, but ultimately I think long term you'll have a better chance to make money in the market between dividend and growth. Uh, and, I, and the market, in my opinion, is not overvalued, but if I look at the high yield or junk bond market, I think it is grossly overvalued. And I think investors really need to either pair exposure or avoid that sector altogether for better opportunity like the overall market on total return. Isidore from Tampa, Florida. Are mutual fund investments and floating rate loans good for current income in today's uh, interest rate environment? Isidore, yes. We like floating rate bond funds because what happens is they float. So they're usually very short term in nature. And when rates go up, they don't go down a lot like the traditional bond funds, longer term bond funds would. So we like floating rate type uh, bond funds or ETFs. I think that's a great opportunity for part of the uh, pie if you're looking for income. And if rates go up, what's cool about floating rate bond funds is that interest rate will go up along with it. Great opportunity, a uh, good part of the portfolio for somebody for that fixed income portion overall. Folks, I'm getting close out of time, and as I've always stressed before, you, the investor, always need to put your financial interests first over your advisor. Why would you, as an investor, ever settle for bad advice that harms your financial security, your family, and your wealth? Why? Let me leave you with this. I've talked to so many investors that tell me, Brian, we should have come in years ago. We had doubts. We knew our portfolio was not doing well, but we waited. We procrastinated. We should have come in sooner. My advice, when you are ready for your financial interest to come first over your advisor, let's talk, let's review, put your fa family's financial security always first, call us today, schedule a consultation. Feel good about the decisions you can now make. Never put your interest behind uh, your advisor. I see this too much. Too many people suffer because of bad advice. Make the call, visit our website, resneywealth.com, and I will see you next week.